Hello everyone. The Bible teaches us that God became a human being in the person of Jesus Christ to save all people from all fear, trouble, sin and death. He was fully God and fully human in one person. He was God, yet during his life on earth he became fully one of us. He preached a gospel of love and grace and was full of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. He called on people to repent for their sins and seek mercy and forgiveness from God and believe in the gospel. He performed many miracles and wonders and demonstrated his power over nature and spirits. Friends, the New Testament relates about 35 miracles performed by Jesus. The miracles can be classified as miracles of nature, miracles of physical healing and miracles of resurrection. The Synoptic Gospels Matthew, Mark and Luke recount more miracles than the Gospel of John but relate substantially the same miracles. In contrast, John narrates only seven of the miracles that Jesus performed and they are comparatively distinct and extraordinary. The miracle of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead in today's Gospel is the seventh and last miracle recounted by John. John calls these seven miracles the seven signs which reveal the divine power of Jesus. The raising of Lazarus from the dead is the greatest and the clearest sign of who Jesus is, the Son of God, the promised Messiah and the Savior of the world. Friends, let us have a quick recap of the story. While Jesus was teaching on the other side of the Jordan, in the place where John had baptized, he heard about his beloved friend Lazarus from Bethany being ill. The name Lazarus is derived from the Hebrew word Eleazar, which means God helps, and Bethany means house of affliction. So Lazarus of Bethany means God helps those who suffer from affliction. Lazarus' sisters Mary and Martha sent word to Jesus about their brother, expecting him to come and heal him. However, Jesus did not respond immediately and even seemed not to care. Friends, Jesus had the power to heal the sick. As a matter of fact, Jesus had already shown his power in all his previous miracles. He exhibited power over the elements when he turned water into wine at the marriage in Cana, fed 5,000 people with the five loaves of bread and two fish and walked on water. He also miraculously healed the son of a royal official, cured a man who had been a paralytic for 38 years and restored sight to a man born blind, both physically and spiritually. So healing a sick person was not a big deal for Jesus. He did not even have to be physically present to heal the sick. This is very evident in the healing of the official son. When the official from Capernaum pleaded with Jesus, who was in Cana, to heal his son who was ill back home, Jesus just spoke the word, Your son will live. Even though his son was in another town, he was healed. Friends, Jesus could also heal any kinds of debility, sicknesses and diseases. The healing of the paralytic man and the man born blind is great testimony to the divine power of Jesus. So. Jesus could have done something when he heard that Lazarus, whom he loved much, was ill. But he did nothing. He neither sent a word of comfort to the two women, nor spoke any healing word. He rather allowed Lazarus to die so that he would resurrect him for God's glory, and made Mary and Martha wait in sorrow and despair. Friends, 
Jesus even waited for two days before he told his disciples that they would go to Bethany in Judea. The disciples objected to Jesus going there because the Jews there were trying to kill him. But Jesus, even though he was well aware of the threats surrounding him, insisted on going by saying, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If one walks during the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks at night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. Friends, what did Jesus mean by this? When his disciples expressed concern for the life of Jesus, they were worried for themselves as much as they were for him. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts and their fear of persecution, made a comparison between someone walking in the day, in the light of the sun, and walking at night without the presence of the sun. During the day, the man can walk without fear, but at night he may stumble and hurt himself. Meaning, Jesus was reminding his disciples that as long as he was with them, they would walk in his light and have no fear but feel secure as they followed him while he went about doing his father's work. In many ways, this was one of the events which occurred in the last days of Jesus' life and clearly contributed to his death. John writes that some of the Jews who were present at the resurrection of Lazarus reported it to the authorities in Jerusalem and they plotted to kill Jesus, afraid that the Romans might destroy their temple and nation. Friends, when Jesus finally arrived four days after Lazarus' death, Martha went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Both had expressed their disappointment with Jesus for not having been there when they needed him most and that he led their brother Lazarus to die. Their grief was the same, but they expressed their feelings in different ways. Martha, upon being told that Jesus was approaching, seemed more eager than Mary to go and meet him, but did not fall at his feet. This suggests her anger or displeasure at Jesus' late arrival. Whereas Mary even though only left home after she was told of the desire of Jesus wanting to see her, ran to him, fell at his feet, and wept over the loss of her brother. Friends, whatever their feelings may have been toward Jesus, in the midst of their grief, anger, and despair, Jesus engaged them in conversation about life, death, and faith. He asked Martha questions that helped her to focus on her faith and on her beliefs about the resurrection. Jesus reminded her that it was still possible for her to have her brother again if she believed in his power. Martha immediately expressed the depth of her faith in Jesus, stating that Jesus could still raise Lazarus if he chose to do so. Jesus then put his plan into action. He went to the tomb with Martha and Mary, and at the tomb Jesus was touched by their grief and cried with them and shared their loss. He then raised Lazarus from the dead for God's glory. Friends, Jesus' conversation with Martha and Mary transformed the miracle story of the raising of Lazarus from the dead into a story of the fullness of new life for all those who believe in Jesus' divine power. Lazarus' death was not meaningless or purposeless, but manifested God's omnipotence. Many of the Jews who had witnessed the miracle believed in Jesus. Friends, what is the message for us? First of all, we all know the feeling of loneliness, grief, anger, despair, pain and suffering when we lack food and the basic necessities and material things, or when we are seriously ill or when we lose a loved one. 
We cry to our Lord Jesus for help. Sometimes he may answer very quickly, at other times he does not immediately answer our cries for help. We wonder why he does not promptly respond to our needs and why he is not willing to do whatever needs to be done to save us from our troubles or save the lives of our loved ones. Friends, Jesus' miracles such as his act of turning water into wine at the request of his mother Mary, the healing of the royal official son remotely with just a word, the healing of your man lame for 40 years, the feeding of thousands of people with the five loaves and two fish, walking on water, transforming the heart of the Samaritan woman and bringing her out of darkness into his wonderful light, giving sight to the man born blind and the raising of Lazarus from the dead show us that Jesus has the power to give both physical life and spiritual life to human beings. Particularly, the raising of Lazarus reminds us that God helps those who suffer from afflictions. God sees our hearts and knows our needs. There are times He gives us what we need even if we can't find words to pray for it or fail or fear to ask Him for it. So, just because we don't see God answering our prayers right away or in the way we want Him to, it does not mean that He ignores our plight or He is aloof. It is up to Him to determine whether or not to give us what we ask for. Sometimes He doesn't give us what we ask for because it is not good for us or for others, directly or indirectly, immediately or ultimately but He certainly hears all our prayers and in one sense He answers all our prayers. Friends, no situation however desperate is beyond the Lord's desire to help those who wait patiently for His intervention and help. Therefore, in our time of need, let us depend solely upon God Himself and in patience Wait for his response, for in his good time he will show mercy and heal all things. Secondly, this story is not a promise that we will never experience death or that all will be brought back to life soon after death. Rather, it is a promise that Jesus is the source of life and hope of resurrection. Death is no barrier to the life he offers. For us believers, even if we die, we shall live and shall never die. And Jesus is the guarantor of this. Friends, just like Jesus, we all will be raised from death, provided we truly believe in Him, that is, personally accept and trust in Him as the resurrection and the life. Amen. God bless you.